Okay, second type of attack. We're gonna take what we used to call the one three or the jab hook. The jab and hook is on the lead side. I'm using my left hand. The reason I'm doing this is she is either in the habit of pushing her hand forward, like that, she's pushing her hand forward, which again allows my hook to get around that side. Or she's over parrying, she's pushing it too far. And then again, we're gonna go around this side and use the left hook. So when we feed it, you just do a catch. Feed the left hook, she's gonna cover all the way back. See, it's all the way behind her head, nice and tight here. She's got a real solid cover. Then left hook, right cross, use any kick as a follow-up. Back you go. Okay, the second one is you're gonna block it here like that. So she went out and blocked it. Then right, left, right, and any kick, go back here. So the difference here is the glove. If I had a boxing glove on, that first cover works very well. Here like that. That's how you really wanna cover your head. Um, the second one, if I have bare hand, she's gonna to wanna to go out and block it. The reason is with a bare hand, that covering motion, this can fit inside it, or if nothing else, it'll just hit the cover itself, and this does damage. So we wanna go out and block the bare hand out here and then return. Okay, next one. So you're gonna cover and hit. So you catch, you cover and hit at the same time. You can go out more and more of the blocking motion, pop, or you can use a covering motion, pop. The idea is the hit is what stops the punch. If I'm in the middle of my punch, when my face is going this way, it's hard to have any force carry through on the punch. There won't be any, because it goes back like that, you go back. That's what allows her to follow up and do the things that she's going to do. So cover and hit should go pa pack, meaning that the, the punch here hits before the cover hits. One more time. The punch hits before the cover hits. We'll emphasize that one more time because beginners usually miss this. Catch, pa back. So we say cover and hit, it probably should say hit and cover. Because the minute she sees this line vacated, she's already going. The cover is just to clean up any stuff coming in. Okay, so catch, cover, and hit. Pow. Then one, two, three. And again, any kick. That's it. Okay, then we bob and weave. So bob and weave, we've taught this a bunch of ways. You want to make a motion where you turn your shoulder into the blow, weave out on the other side, and then come over the top with that right hand. There's a lot of nuance here, there's a lot of details. Different people teach it different ways. Sometimes when they bob and weave, they'll actually fade back a little bit. So you see she went back before she comes in. Sometimes they'll crowd them. So you come in with your shoulder and your forearm and you're crowding them here like that and getting in. So we'll stay away from all these little nuanced things about bob and weave and just get the base motion. So catch, bob and weave as you go under, right, left, right, and again, any kick. Here's a little time to have some fun. As I've said already, all of our kicks in the John Fon program or in the Panatuka program are below the waist. Most of you know that in Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee's system, there were high kicks for the, the films, the movies. They call this theatrical system. So we have a rule at the gym, which is a lot of fun. If you kick above the waist, you have to make a Bruce Lee noise. What? <laughs> what? So we actually do enforce it. So if they're going to kick above the waist, what? You make a Bruce Lee noise. Um, it's kind of a message. It's just to make sure that we separate high kicks, which are great for your training, aerobics, etc., and low kicks below the waist, which are functional. Those are the ones that you're actually gonna use should you need to use it. Okay, so catch, bob and weave. You see the weave here? Beautiful. One, two, three, and beautiful. The shoulder stop means that you reach inside of an arcing motion and cut it off at the base. So you see that she's got an arc here, it's coming out wide. She's just gonna stop it here at the base so I can't get through. Then deliver the left hook, right cross, and in the kick. Okay, so if I catch, shoulder stop, one, two, and in the kick here like that. This last jab hook defense is a favorite in class. So we're gonna do a cover or a block, something like that. Make sure you cover the blow first. Now right from that position, you're gonna deliver a hammer fist. This is very logical, guys, especially if they miss a little bit, back. You've really got this, this line here like that to deliver. This could be more of a control, where she's controlling my head. Now she's got the head to, to manipulate or to use as an impact, you can use your forearm. Or this could be hit on the bicep. She might crush my bicep here like that. Or it could just be a hammer to the head. Bonk, here like that. So we say, bonk, one more time. Bonk, here like that. So when we deliver the hammer, we're gonna go catch, cover, hammer down, uppercut, then do three punches and a kick. Okay, this is how the class goes. Catch, cover, and hammer. 
jumper cut, one, two, three, and deliver the kick through like that. So that is your jab hook and jab cross defenses.